All right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment, episode two of A Snowball's Chance in Healthcare. I'm Josh Butler, your host, um, and we're going to talk a little bit this week um, about a different topic that uh, not a lot of people are very familiar with. But before we get into that, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Josh Butler. I live here in Amarillo. Uh, I own, uh, I'm a co-owner uh, with my wife, my beautiful wife, Allison. I own a local healthcare consulting and brokerage firm. It's called Butler Benefits and Consulting. And uh, we work primarily with employer groups um, on their uh, employee benefit packages, uh, risk management, population health management. That's the consulting type of work that I do. Um, we've been established since about 2017. Uh, my wife and I have both been in the industry for a lot of years, but um, in 2017, we decided to uh, start Butler Benefits and Consulting um, here in Amarillo. We've been extremely blessed. We've got great clients. We've got great employees. And, um, you know, I I'm, I'm just want to say again, thank you so much, KGNC, for this opportunity to start this program. Uh, this is installment number two. And today um, I'm going to talk about uh, a little um, issue called network discounts. OK, so the first thing is I want to know what chance does a snowball have in healthcare if the snowball doesn't understand the games and the gamesmanship behind network discounting. OK, and so I'm going to start today's discussion or our topic today with a little arithmetic. So here's a question. You decide that you need a new pair of running shoes and you go out shopping and let's say you, you decided you want to get a pair of Nikes. So you strike out and you begin shopping, right? And you go to the first store and the first store has the pair of Nikes that you want. You see them over there on the rack and, and you're in luck. The store is having a sale. Sweet, right? The sale is 40% off, 40% off sale, 40% off of $120. So follow me here for a second, okay? Now, instead of buying them on the spot like I would, now when it comes to healthcare, ladies and gentlemen, I shop for healthcare services for my clients and for myself and for my family. But when it comes to a lot of other things, I don't shop around. I go directly to the place that has what I'm looking for. And whether it's on sale or not, I typically end up buying it. I'm a horrible shopper, right? But let's say you're not like me in this situation. And instead of buying the Nikes at store number one, uh, you go to store number two. And there they are. Same pair of Nikes that you want, same everything, you know, and guess what? They're also having a sale. They're having a 30% off sale, but this time it's 30% off 100. And once again, since you're such a bargain shopper, you decide not to pull the trigger just yet. You're going to move on a little bit. You're going to do a little bit more shopping. You go to store number three and there they are. Same pair of Nikes, okay? And there's no sale, but they're listed at $85. Now, here's the question. Where do you buy the Nikes? Now, you probably weren't taking notes and writing things down. But remember, store number one had a 40 percent off sale. Store number two had a 30 percent off sale and store number three had no sale. So are you going to buy the Nikes? Well, if you're looking for the lowest price, it's store number two, the 30 percent discount off of 100, 30 percent off 100. You're going to end up paying 70 bucks for that for that pair of shoes. Right. It's basic, <laughs> basic arithmetic. Store number one, though, they had a larger discount. Their discount was 40%, but they also had a higher starting price, a higher starting price of $120. Well, 40% off $120, you're going to end up paying $72. So, I mean, this is like, I know what everybody's saying right now. Well, thanks for the math lesson, Captain Obvious. This is pretty simple math. Um, but the point is this, a larger discount doesn't always lead to a lower price, right? In fact, I'll make a deal with anybody out there that's listening. You can call me. You can get in touch with me. I'll make a deal with I'll make a deal with you. I'm going to sell you anything I own with a 99 percent discount under one condition. <laughs> well, you of course, you know what the condition is. I get to set the starting price. I'm willing to give you whatever discount you want as long as I get to set the price. And this is exactly how healthcare in this country is bought and sold. But if you think about this for a second, healthcare is the only thing in the U.S. economy that I can think of that we all purchase at some point in our lives. We all utilize healthcare. We all purchase healthcare services. But it's the only thing we purchase before anyone ever knows the price or the quality of what we just bought, right? So that's 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 a problem, okay? 
this is an issue in the gamesmanship that you need to understand the games that gets played um, through your health plan. So insurance companies come along and they offer members, which are companies, tremendous discounts on healthcare related services and even prescription drugs. And but this is why the starting price is so important. So if it's a if it's a discount off the price, the price really is important, ladies and gentlemen. And so I have seen healthcare related services, some in some cases, marked up as much as 1200 percent. 1200 percent. That's 120 times. And then your insurance comes along and they apply a 50 percent discount. So. Raise your hand if you think that's a tremendous deal for you. We're going to mark the price up 1,200%, but give you a 50% discount. So if you participate in a PPO, like a preferred provider organization, like a PPO health plan, or maybe it's an HMO, which stands for a health maintenance organization type of health plan, this is precisely how the vast majority of all of our healthcare goods and services and even prescriptions are being bought and sold back to us through health plans, okay? And so it's no wonder why health insurance has gotten so expensive. Now, listen, I know that for many of you out there, this may be counterintuitive. It, it, it's just, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. You're thinking to yourself, now, hang on a second. I have health insurance and the best possible price out there is gonna be through my insurance. That's what insurance is for, is to lower my price. Well, in my best Lee Corso impersonation, not so fast, my friends. You know, uh, for starters, no doctor or hospital charges the exact same price for the exact same service. For example, you know, one hospital may literally charge charge $10,000 for a single MRI, while another hospital may charge $7,000 for the same MRI. And then an imaging center up the street may charge 500. And these are real examples of price variance uh, that exist in our healthcare system. To make the situation even more complicated, one insurance company may have a 55% discount off the price, while another insurance company may only have a 51 discount, 51% discount off the price. And here's the here's the bad news: nobody knows. That is proprietary information. The insurance carriers don't share this information with people. Now that's changing. That's changing, and we're going to talk about uh, a, a piece of legislation here in a minute that's changing all of this, and that's changing to give consumers, that's you, that's me, that's employers in this community, to give them information and insight so that they can make good buying uh, decisions, right? So getting the price in healthcare is not that easy. Have you ever tried, you know, before you go to the doctor, have you ever tried uh, asking for a price before you go? Have you ever wondered why when you do ask for a price, if you do, have you ever wondered why their first question back is, well, what insurance do you have? Well, now you know. It's because they all pay different amounts for the exact same services. They have to know what the discount is to be applied before they can tell you what the ultimate end price is. Now think about this for a second. This makes no sense. What does your health insurance have to do with the actual price of healthcare? Well, I've already given you the answer, but think about it this way. When I go to buy a car and I walk out onto a car lot and I see the car that I want and I'm like, okay, that's the one I want. How much does it cost? They don't ask me, well, it depends. Are you with GACO or are you with Allstate? They, I mean, because my car insurance it has no impact on the sticker price of the car. But this this marriage, this uh, this connection between our health insurance plans and what we end up paying for healthcare services, sometimes it can be a huge deal, right? So this goes back to the Nike example. If you don't know the starting price and you don't know what the sale is or the discount is, you're net, how do you ever know if you're getting a good deal? The fact is you don't, you can't without this information. And this is what makes shopping around being good consumers for valuable healthcare services is why it's so hard. No one knows the price before they receive their services. Now, we'll say this, discounts, discounts are valuable. Of course, there's some value to a discount, like with the with the Nikes. When you got 30% off, that discount was worth 30 bucks, right? 
But the real question that people should be asking about these discounts, and especially in companies, is discount off what? I don't care if it's a 50% discount, if the price has been raised 1,200%. And I'll just tell you, a 50% discount at VSA is not the same as a 50% discount at Northwest. It could be that a 40% discount at one hospital is more valuable than a 50% discount at another one. But it's all relative to the starting price, okay? And that's why it's so important to use these new pieces of legislation. And there's all kinds of resources available to employers out there like data analytics system where we can collect data on you know, prices from one hospital to another hospital. As a matter of fact, we use a data analytics system at Butler Benefits. I can tell you what the vending machines made at any hospital in America. That's how detailed the information is. And so um, employers need to know that these are tools and resources that if you learn how to use them or you work with people that know how to use them, you can gain a lot more leverage and a lot more insight into ways to control your healthcare costs, right? And so, you know, these discounts are, are, are actually, you know, what insurance companies are actually paying these healthcare providers, and it's extremely important. So let's transition. Let's talk a little bit about these new transparency laws real quick. Um, right now, the federal government, the feds are rolling out laws and pieces of legislation primarily through the Consolidated Appropriations Act. And if you, I said this, I mentioned this uh, at the tail end of our uh, uh, inaugural episode. If you don't, if you're not familiar with the Consolidated Appropriations Act, or if your current broker or your current advisor is not having conversations with your company about the impacts of the Consolidated Appropriations Act, I highly recommend and advise you to get up to speed um, because this um, Appropriations Act, it is applicable to insurance companies, hospitals, healthcare providers, and yes, it also implies to employ, or applies to employers and employers who sponsor health plans. This act requires these entities, hospitals and, and companies and insurance companies, that it requires you to publish prices and actual accepted amounts. So not just the price, but what these facilities actually get paid um, for all kinds of healthcare related services, including hospital charges. Um, in other words, they have to make their prices uh, public and they also have to make their accepted amounts public. And the government's given them timelines for all of this to be implemented. And there's a lot of pushback and there's lawsuits, you know, flying around, you know, trying to block this type of thing. And so, um, but this is important data. So now with this data, once it becomes readily available to everybody, not only can you see what the hospital is going to charge you for your next procedure, you can actually drill down into the data to see what your insurance company is going to pay for that procedure. You can see what Aetna pays. You can see what Blue Cross pays. You can see what Scott and White Health Plan pays. This, if you think about this for a minute, this is tremendously useful and beneficial information. It's extremely valuable. I mean, don't you want to know that why, it, why your premiums higher on, on one health insurance company versus another? Well, now you can start to compare what they're paying with your money, by the way, what they're paying for claims for actual healthcare services at these facilities. And so um, this is why it's so critically important for companies, especially Actual claims are probably the biggest component of what establishes your premium if you're fully insured. So if you pay less at one hospital system versus another hospital system, that's pretty important, right? Here's the example. If you pay, if through one plan, you pay $5,000 $5, for a surgery at one hospital, but at another hospital, it would have cost you $2,000. Well, you just overpaid by three grand just because you went to a different hospital. That's three grand you didn't have to pay. And that's 3,000 reasons that we just gave the insurance company to raise your premium next year. But now companies can start to use this data to identify what they're actually gonna pay for healthcare services before the service. Now think about that. If you're armed with that kind of data and that kind of information, 
man, that's a game changer. It's especially valuable if your company is self-funded or self-insured. It will show you what you're paying versus the large carriers and even the public payers like Medicare and Medicaid. Do you want to know how your self-funded plan stacks up against Blue Cross Blue Shield? And if they're getting a better deal than your company's getting, don't you want to know if you're getting a good deal or not? Well, to me, it's not even about, it's not a matter of wanting to know, really. I mean, because here's why. Employers, listen up. Employers are plan sponsors, okay? They're also fiduciaries of the plan. They have a fiduciary responsibility to their employees to prudently manage those plan assets. You know, self-funded plans are, are regulated under ERISA, just like 401k and other retirement plans. And because that's commingled money, the employer, the plan sponsor, quote unquote, is the fiduciary. They have a fiduciary responsibility not to overspend, not to overpay. Well, now with this data, they they can start to verify that. OK, so most employers, though. With the exception of maybe maybe the largest employers in the country, employers have no say over the negotiated prices that are paid through their health insurance plans. Your company doesn't have a seat at the table when the hospital is negotiating a managed care contract with an insurance company. I'm sorry, you just don't have a say. So the ultimate price that ends up being paid is paid for by you and you didn't even have a seat at the table and it's paid through your premiums. And it's also paid collectively with your employees through things like deductibles, co-pays, co-insurance, and directly by employers or who, who are self-funded. So we know this, that employers who are empowering their own companies with this information and data and companies that are willing to use this data to explore alternative strategies and alternative plan designs, they are getting a seat at the table. They are getting to have a say over what they pay in healthcare, okay? Now that's, if you're, if you're looking for that kind of control, you can get it, but you just can't expect to get it by doing the same things over and over again, you know, and, and expecting a different result. Employers, they just need to be shown the way. Now, I've mainly been speaking directly to employers, plan sponsors, the fiduciaries, but I wanna backtrack just a second and I wanna talk to the individual employee the individual plan member, the person that's covered by the health plan. What can you do with this data? What, how can you leverage this information to help yourself and your own family? So here's a question. What do you do when you find out that the cash price for a service or a good or a drug or whatever is better than the price through your insurance? Now, more and more people are starting to discover this, but I want everybody to know something. Just because you have health insurance doesn't require you to use it. There is a federal law under HIPAA high tech. It's part of the HIPAA uh, depart, or, or provision that protects your health information. There's also a federal uh, piece of federal legislation that allows the patient, that's you, to instruct their doctors and healthcare providers not to share their HIPAA protected information with their insurance companies. How many of you knew that? I didn't know it for a long time. Now, there's a couple of caveats to this thing, but you know the, the main gist of this, what you mainly need to know is just because you have health insurance doesn't mean you have to use it. Now, you might get some pushback from the doctor's office or, you, or from the billing office or from you know, the accounting office or whatever. So you gotta be ready to hold your ground. You gotta be ready. I've had people call me and tell me that a hospital told them that it was quote unquote, insurance fraud if they didn't submit a claim through the insurance. Well, that's simply not the case, okay? In fact, it's a federal violation for anybody to share your protected health information with anyone without your consent, and that includes your insurance company and for the purposes of payment, okay? So you gotta know what your rights are, folks. You gotta know what the alternatives are out there. You gotta be willing to stand your ground. And that might be scary sometimes. It might be awkward sometimes. But I mean, this, this could mean the difference uh, sometimes in thousands and thousands of dollars, and it can save a lot of money. And it, so it's always, we always tell people whether uninsured or they're insured, it doesn't matter. It is a prudent thing. It's a good idea to always ask for the cash price 
everywhere you go. Don't be afraid to ask for a cash price. And guess what? Don't be afraid to ask for a discount off the cash price either. They're used to this kind of conversation because it's the kind of conversations they have every single day of the year with health insurance companies. It's all about discounting, right? And remember what I told you in the last episode about how their pricing is established in the first place. They're not expecting the full price. Their whole model is predicated on a discount off that price. So don't be afraid to uh, ask for that kind of stuff up front. Now, people get this. They, they get this concept, right? We just don't exercise it enough. I'm going to use one last example here. I want everybody to think about GoodRx for a second. If you haven't heard about GoodRx right now, this would be a good time to come out from under that rock and join society. Everybody knows what GoodRx is, right? Well, listen, GoodRx is not a part or an extension or a portion of your benefit plan or your insurance plan. It's a cash pay and a coupon app that works outside of your insurance plan. The prices that you pay through GoodRx when you use the app, they don't go towards your insurance deductible. They don't go to your out-of-pocket limits. They're not, they're not a part of your insurance policy. And guess what? Nobody cares that it's not a part of the insurance plan. Millions and millions of people every year use GoodRx, including myself. I've used it on multiple occasions. It's not a big deal. I mean, if the cash price is better than the price through my health insurance, then that's what I'm looking for. Um, people aren't worried that that's not going toward their deductible. I know I'm not. I'm more interested in getting to the lowest net cost for my prescription, bottom line. And if it's $4 through GoodRx, but it's $14 through my health insurance, well, why would I pay $14 for something when I go uh, and, and can get it for $4? Again, this is how GoodRx has kind of revolutionized the consumer market because they're giving us the price of something before we buy it, and it's forcing healthcare providers to compete for our business. And competition, if you're a red-blooded American capitalist, you know that competition is good right? Competition, true competition and transparency drives down the cost of healthcare. So the same mentality that we have with GoodRx, this should be the mentality and the mindset on all things healthcare related. Ask for cash pricing everywhere you go. Doesn't matter. Doctor's office, urgent care clinic, the pharmacy, the ER, doesn't matter. You're going to be surprised about the number of times, how many instances and cases you're going to find that the cash rate is lower uh, than your health insurance negotiated rate. Now, if you're an employer and you provide health insurance benefits to your employees and you'd like to know how your plan stacks up against the best performing plans in America, well, you can reach out to me. We use this data and we use this information to answer that question for employers. Are you getting a good deal or are you not? Is there a more valuable option in the market that you don't know about? This, this data helps answer that question. If you're a covered employee and maybe not the decision maker over your health insurance benefits, ask for cash pricing everywhere you go. Do your research. This data can point you in the direction of where your healthcare dollars are gonna be best spent. And that's important. And with that guys, listen, discounts, network discounts, they're not always as, val as valuable as they appear. The question, the burning question to remember is this, discount off what? Well, now with available pricing and payment data, you can know what you're going to actually pay before you get services. And that's critically important if you want to lower your health care and benefits costs. So I'm Josh Butler, president of Butler Benefits and Consulting right here in Amarillo, Texas. Each week, I'm arming employers and their employees with information that they need to have a snowball's chance in healthcare. Check us out online at butler-benefits.com. That's butler-benefits.com. We've got a lot of great content and resources on our website, including all episodes of A Snowball's Chance in Healthcare. Until next week, thanks for tuning in and listening. God bless. Have a great day.